uh, so i'm shorya and my topic is biogas upgradation using energy efficient solvent uh, kinetics and pilot plant study so i'm working in uh, ict i'm a phd scholar and my uh, my expertise is in carbon capture and upgrading the biogas so basically uh, i'll cover all these things what is the composition of this upgraded biogas uh, because i am working on chemical uh, chemical absorption so i am using amines what type of amines what combination of amines i am using how i have developed the solvent whatever works i have done and the results that i have done in my lab in ict under professor vedya i will uh, present in this presentation so this raw biogas as you can see has a a methane composition of 24 has 70 54 to 70% and carbon dioxide has is uh, and this carbon dioxide is 25 to 45% which is a large amount of carbon dioxide and this lowers the calorific value of the biogas so this upgraded biogas has a composition of 90% methane about 3 to 4% of carbon dioxide in it so here we can see there is a biogas plant up with upgraded system so in this which uh, we can see biogas is being released and raw biogas is then uh, then uh, it's sent to the absorber column where amines absorb the co2 and the uh, rich co2 then goes to the and the clean Uh, methane with nine more than ninety percent composition goes to the is released and this uh, this absorbed CO two the uh, amine that absorbs CO two goes to the desorber column where uh, at higher temperature the CO two is released at atmosphere released and the, again the the solvent is regenerated and it's again sent back to the absorber column so the main energy regeneration energy regenerated solvent is being spent here. so uh, my work is to how to reduce the how to upgrade this co2 how to upgrade this biogas by removing co2 in the minimum amount of en to and in the minimum amount of energy requirement so this is the my this was my goal and uh, so so now coming to the as my composition as my work is on chemical absorption so uh, here we actually know there are basically three many types of amines are available single amine which is basically primary and secondary amine tertiary amine strictly hindered amine primary and secondary amine we know they have very high co2 reactivity reactivity but very high regeneration energy so i uh, and this uh, tertiary amine have low regeneration energy but low co2 reactivity so, and this sterically hindered amine has low regeneration energy and low co2 absorb and uh, low co2 absorption rate so i have used this sterically hindered amine with a physical solvent because physical solvent i have used because it reduces the regeneration energy and uh, with less amount of water this was my composition because i i used sterically hindered amine with physical solvent i have reduced the water composition in the uh, in the solvent designing of this solvent so uh, it was observed when we use water the energy consumption in regenerating the solvent is very much when when we have use with a non aqueous solvent because the heat of low because of low heat capacity low volatility volatility high co2 cyclic capacity of using non aqueous solvent high partial pressure so all these uh, all these point all these points just reduces the energy consumption of the designed solvent so when you design a solvent you have to look for the following properties like it should have high absorption capacity high absorption rate low corrosion property low regeneration energy low degradation low degradation and low degradation so we have studied all the aspects of this thing and we finally come to this conclusion that with the design solvent we have used a sterically hindered amine which can just amp hpd ampd which is easily available in the market and a very uh, in a not in a very uh, and uh, high rate and used with a physical solvent which is glycol ether or glycerol and just added 15% of water we have added 15% we have reduced the water consumption here because water has high specific heat it requires high temperature to regenerate it has high boiling point 
So that is why we have reduced the water consumption, water percentage to 15%, which reduces a large amount of evaporation energy, evaporation energy, heat of vaporization. So now these uh, these are the uh, these are the equipments that I have worked in ICT. This is the regenerator uh, re absorber desorber column. This is the pilot plant, uh, stirred cell reactor. This is a absorber desorber column with uh, tray type column with uh, 15 15 uh, tray tray type column. And this is an equilibrium study. This equilibrium study is basically do is done to uh, design the column. And this is a setup for batch absorption desorption trials. So this is a basically a reaction mechanism that takes place when a CO2 reacts with amine and it forms zwitter ion and zwitter ion which reacts with, on the hydrolysis of the CO2 zwitter uh, ion we get carbonate bicarbonate all these things we use to get in absorber column and desorber column and because we have used this alcohol we have we have not used water we have used alcohol in this so the regeneration energy was reduced because the carbonate formation takes place and the carbonate has a low reaction low enthalpy uh, low in, uh, reaction of enthalpy so it uh, the energy to release the co2 in when uh, uh, in carbonate is reduced here so this was an experimental setup to measure the kinetics it was uh, like in a stirred cell reactor where the gas reservoir is there is in this a gas was charged and uh, the pressure uh, reduction pressure reduction was measured in the pressure sensor and the rate were measured and we also measure the physical properties of various solvent here. And we have used all these analogies. We have used N2O cylinder because of CO2 and N2O, uh, because N2O has same chemical structure, but it is not reactive to the amine. So that is why we have used N2O here. And we determine all the physical properties of all the solvent that we have uh, designed. And these are the physical properties of the aqueous and the, the, and the, the, the NS1 that we have designed here. All the density, viscosity, diffusivity, solubility uh, uh, we have calculated, and uh, these are the kinetics data. We can see the rate versus pressure data, in which we can see the uh, rates of uh, the when we have not used water, we have no used non-aqueous solvent. The rates were pretty high because uh, the because of the physical absorption takes place, and this uh, this here we can see it's a batch desorption study. And we can see uh, when we have used less water, that is 15% water, the desorption was uh, much higher when uh, water was used in a less percentage. So this is a basically a schematic diagram of absorber and desorber, where we can see a raw biogas enters the absorber column and it goes back and goes to a stripper column where it again, re uh, where it gets regenerated and goes back to the absorber column. And this is how the cycle happens in the pilot plant study. So this same setup we have in our lab, which is an absorber column and a desorber column. And uh, it's a, it has 15 trays in it. And uh, we uh, we all worked in this uh, setup uh, with, uh, um, we have the mixtures of gases. And uh, here we observe that uh, uh, in case of uh, non-aqueous, this is a desorber column. We have to operate at lower temperature because when we worked at water, we have to work at more than 100 degrees Celsius. But when we worked at, uh, at uh, with a non-aqueous solvent, the temperature was reduced to 90 degrees Celsius, and thus the regeneration energy was also reduced. So this uh, this uh, we have developed the solvent. These were the operating conditions of the pilot plant that we were working on. The CO2 composition we have varied from 10 to 40 percent. Uh, 10 to 40 less liquid circulation was this much. And the absorption column was 313 temperature, and the desorption column was 90 degrees Celsius. And this was the uh, regeneration energy that we uh, we have uh, calculated uh, from this uh, pilot plant. From the for the aqueous, you can see the all the rare, uh, aqueous this was 3.8 and 3.25. But when the moment we use the non-aqueous solvent, the energy got reduced 2.6 to 2.97, and uh, thus the design solvent that is NS uh, was at 2.2. So this was my, this was uh, the regeneration solvent and the cycle we have uh, this experiment we have done for 50 hours and uh, it was given the same cyclic loading. So uh, design solvent that uh, we have designed has low heat and electrical demand for the regeneration, low operational cost. It is compatible with the MEA and MDA that is a benchmark solvent and this design solvent has also a high calorific value.
so the captured co2 that is uh, that the co2 is been removed we can use in various uh, way and uh, uh, we are working uh, we, uh, we are working in uh, various uh, way to replace the co2 that is being absorbed and 